Morning, folks. I hope that you're all well and enjoying this wonderful spell of summer light weather as you come to watch the video uh, this day. Now, uh, I'm going to share with you now a short reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, and it contains a verse that will be probably very well known to uh, many of you. So let me just read this section from the scriptures for you. It is a passage that's entitled, Choose Whom You Will Serve. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the, your, the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. May God bless that short reading from his holy word. Now, a few years ago, whilst on holiday in East Yorkshire, we happened to drive into the beautiful town of Beverly. Anyone who's ever been there will know what I mean. It's a lovely little place. However, as you drive in at a certain point, you come to the Grove Hill Junction in Beverly, and that's far from beautiful. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it, but it is the junction, I think it's the junction in the United Kingdom that has the most set, most sets of traffic lights. I think it numbers 42, 42 different sets of traffic lights. No less than 42 different sets of traffic lights. Driving through it was more guesswork than anything else, but hey, at least at least it was fun. I had done a bit of research before and I knew it existed, I knew it was coming, but that doesn't mean I was any less uh, panicked when I got there. But I wonder if you feel like that image of that junction is like a pictorial representation of your life at the moment. I know I do. If it's not five tests and phases one, was it one to four, it, track and trace, which I always thought was for parcels, furlough schemes, then there's all that phrase, the new normal. Have you ever heard that, the new normal? And what's it even meant to mean? I'm not a big fan of the phrase, but I mean, I do get the gist of what they're trying to say, that life, life's different now, and it's, uh, a lot of it's not coming back, and, I, and a lot of things have changed, I understand, but I just don't like the phrase. The new normal until something else comes along, and then it'll be the new, new normal. But I think life in 2020 is a bit like being, rolling up on that, on that junction with, 42 sets of traffic lights before you. Go, but only a wee bit. Stay, but not much longer. Wait until it's safe to proceed. Now go, or is it stop? It's also confusing. How do we go forward like this? How can we plan for the future? Can you even imagine your life a year from now? It's impossible. I've not even mentioned the looming financial crisis, which may or may not happen according to which economists you prefer to listen to. I've not even mentioned the geopolitical tensions that are bubbling away, boiling over almost in some parts of the world. And these things will affect our lives. They will have a, a knock-on effect, even if directly we are not affected. How do you make sense of it all? How is it possible to see our way through? Which aspects of our life are changed forever? Which will be somewhat different? What new opportunities are there ahead? What things are we determined to do differently? Where do you even start edging your way through the junction that is life in 2020? Well, let me suggest a thought. But in doing so, I'm going to first muddy the waters a little bit more. So please indulge me. Because I'm going to add yet another set of traffic lights, if you will. Because I believe that this set is the key to understanding how the whole thing works. Because prior to this, as a society, we were hurtling down the motorway like we were driving a sports car. Life so busy, flying by at a terrific speed, consuming, spending, living for the moment, little time for each other, little time for thoughts of why and what we're doing and where we're going. Or where we were going. 
This crisis has come upon us like a sudden red light out of nowhere. Well, maybe not out of nowhere because the amber light was there telling us to slow down, telling us the stop was coming, but we missed the signs or we ignored them. And then the red light was right in front of us and we've had to slam on the brakes. We see the red now, don't we? We can't miss the red now. And so we've come to a sudden halt. We'd be stopped in our tracks and in a way forced to reassess our lives. For some this has been a difficult period. Above all we think of those who have died and their broken heart and families and we pray for them. Then there are those who have been hit hard financially. Business owners, those on furlough, those made redundant, the self-employed with no means of making a living. Then there are those relationships put under strain. But also those who now realise how much they had missed out on by not spending enough time with family. Previously we can't get that time back, can we? So we're all stuck at the junction with 42, well, at least 42 lights or more, so many thoughts, so many fears, so many worries, so many uncertainties, so many regrets, so many ways forward. But the central traffic light that I'm talking about asks us to wait on amber and think about one critical question. What is your relationship with God? At one point in Mark's account of Jesus' life, Mark chapter 8, he relays the following incident. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Who do you say that Jesus is? When we were hammering down the highway at high speed, maybe we never gave it a thought. But here's the thing. Without a clear sense of direction on this question, we're on a road to nowhere. A road that will always lead us back to the same point, to the same question. We might like to think we can just avoid it. Put the foot to the accelerator, foot to the floor, and maybe we imagine like we're like the guys from Top Gear pushing a Maserati or a Lamborghini to its limits. But actually, we're actually a bit more like that scene from Mr. Bean. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You haven't seen that comedy show, Mr. Bean, where he keeps driving around and around, around about time and time again. Maybe you feel a wee bit more like that, if you're honest. We like to think we're progressing, cruising down the road, maybe not so much. And you can't run on forever, because no matter how fast you go, you can't outrun God. You're going to come right back to this junction, right back to this central question, staring at the same traffic light, which is asking you the same question. Who do you say Jesus is? Where are you with God? In our reading from Joshua 24, Joshua lays it on the line for God's people in plain and simple terms. In verse 15 of our reading, he invites people to turn and to trust in God, to make their choice to serve God or to serve false gods. And we have a few of them ourselves. But he says, as for me, he says, and my household, we will serve the Lord. And that's the amber, that's the amber light, that's where we are at the moment. Who will you trust? Who will you serve today? One of the real dangers of that junction in Beverly was that you mistook, uh, you might mistake a, a one green light for your green light, if you know what I mean. They're so close together, you see a green light coming up and you perhaps think it's your green light to go. Not that I did that, of course. If you choose a path away from God, you follow the wrong green light. It will take you down the wrong road and you will find yourself back stuck at the junction in time. But those who trust in the Lord have a clear road ahead. For like one of those self-drive cars, God has taken the wheel. God's in control. When you say, as for me, 
as for my household, we'll serve the Lord. You're handing over control to God. You're letting him take the wheel. And he knows the way forward. At the moment, we can't make sense of it. At the moment, we are like a rabbit in the headlights. We're stuck at the junction. We can't make head nor tail of it. We don't know the way through. Hand it over to God. Trust in him. Let him guide you. Amen. Thanks, God. Well, let's turn to prayer now. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, firstly, that your word is available for us to read and that it's it's new every morning. Lord, for, for some of us, these verses will be very familiar. And for some of us, they, they may be new. But whatever our circumstances, the words we have just read and been thinking about are really challenging. Choose this day whom you will serve. Lord, we've been living through a really challenging time in these weeks of lockdown. And even though restrictions are beginning to be lifted a little, it still feels very restricted and, and very strange and, and slightly unnatural. But during this time, many, many of us have had the opportunity just to rethink our priorities. To realise that some of the things that we set huge store by actually don't matter very much at all and, and they're fleeting they don't last and we've come to recognize lord the the value of things that really do matter the value of of friendship of family of love but above all lord we thank you that it's given us many of us an opportunity to realize again the value of knowing you as our God and as our Father. And so this morning we come to you, Lord, as children to their Father, and we we cry to you again this morning, Lord, for our world, which is still gripped by this pandemic. And we pray, Lord, for your mercy around the world, that you will touch hearts and lives of men and women boys and girls right around the world as we struggle to come to terms with this new this new uh, way of living lord we particularly pray for those who grieve at this time for the countless thousands upon thousands of families around the world and particularly in our own area father who grieve the loss of loved ones family members friends neighbors colleagues Lord, you are the God of compassion. We pray that you would come to them and touch them. We continue to pray, Lord, for those who spend hours way beyond what they're expected to do, but spend hours not just diligently, but sacrificially working on our behalf, whether it's in the health service or driving delivery vans or emptying our bins. Lord, all the countless people behind the scenes who are continuing to work to make our lives bearable in really difficult circumstances. Lord, come close to them, be near to them, and may they know that they are valued. Father, we pray for those who are struggling in whatever ways in lockdown. We pray particularly for those who struggle emotionally or perhaps mentally at the moment particularly during this month as we've been thinking of mental health. We pray for those for whom these past 10 weeks have been almost unbearable. Father, come to them, comfort them. May they know your presence and your, the touch of your healing hand at this time. And Father, we pray for our church family as well for those who are feeling isolated, for those who are really struggling with lockdown. Lord, we pray for our family 
physically fractured as it is, and yet we thank you for the, the ways in which we've been able to get together uh, online to meet together. It's not the same, Lord, but it's something. And we, so we thank you for the technology that allows us uh, to meet together and to see one another and to spend time with one another. But at this time, Lord, above all, we come back to your word and we pray that during these uh, difficult days that you would constantly bring us back to your word and remind us of its truths. And today, Lord, we ask that you would help us to be able to say with your people so long ago, as for me and my household, we will follow the Lord. So help us to do that, Lord. And all of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>